Hello YouTube, this is Matt Pullen, and this is a remake of a previous chess video that had too many errors. So what we'll be talking about uh, today is the concept of checking distance in Rook and Pawn endgames. Uh, take a situation like this one, where the Black King and the White Rook kind of exclude each other from the position. The White Rook is cutting off the Black King, preventing it from going to the uh, D file. And if the white rook were to move, then the black king could enter the position, getting in front of the pawn, and uh, easily draw. So here, uh, the relationship between the black rook and the white pawn is incredibly important. We see in this position, there are two squares in between the uh, rank where the pawn is and the rank where the rook is. And this indicates that white will be able to advance the pawn without the assistance of his rook. Uh, if there were three squares in between the rook and the pawn, then the white king cannot advance the pawn without the assistance of the rook. And um, in a situation like that, uh, black should be able to draw. So to start, we'll look at what happens with uh, white to move here. I'll pass for black. and. White will play king to f4, uh, trying to uh, advance the pawn to e5. Well, the black king can't help because it's cut off. The black rook can't uh, prevent the pawn from going to e5 because the king is supporting it. So the only thing left to do, put the white king in check. So uh, the pawn wants to go to e5, but cannot because uh, white's king is checked. And uh, if king to e5, well, this doesn't threaten to advance the pawn because uh, the pawn is blockaded. So white doesn't want to do that. He wants to play king to g5. Now this advances a threat. So rook to e7, stopping the pawn from going to e5. King f5. Now white renews the threat of pawn to e5, and his king has gotten uh, one rank further up. So rook f7 check. King to e6. This is uh, the critical move. Uh, white attacks the rook, stops any checks, and uh, the black rook cannot control the square e5. So again, we see here that when the king gets close to the defender rook, the uh, you know, the king is much more powerful. Whereas rooks they work f best when they are far away from the opposing king. And uh, here, rook f8, uh, this would allow white to win quicker because of king e7, again, cutting off all of the important squares. And uh, the black rook can't go here because the white pawn controls the square. So white will be able to play e5 and e6. So say, I mean, say rook h8 and then e5. Um, this, this would lose pretty quickly, actually. So let's go here and give black the position after rook h7, the idea being to throw checks from the side to slow down the advance of the uh, white pawn. Well, after e5, rook h6 check, again, we see here there are only two squares in between the uh, file where the rook is versus the file where the pawn is. And this indicates, once again, that the white king will be able to advance the pawn without any help. So say king f7, threatening to push the pawn. Rook h7 check, king g6, attacking the rook, uh, stopping the rook from checking from the side, stopping the rook from checking from the front. So uh, in order to stop e6, the rook has to go in front of the pawn, and now king f6, again, no checks, and white is threatening to advance the pawn. Rook h7, e6, um, rook h6 check. And here is, uh, after king h7, rook h7 check, king g6. Again, is, uh, is not possible to prevent e7. I mean, say rook e7, and now king f6. Again, this uh, attacks the rook and the square in front of the pawn. Rook e8, e7, followed by uh, king f7 and e8, queen, where uh, black will have to give up the rook for the pawn.
So say we go here, uh, black can prolong the game by bringing the rook behind the pawn, but if white knows how to win the Lucena position after, say, e7, rook e2, king f7, threatening to queen, so rook f2 check, king e8, and this, uh, this is what's known as the Lucena position, where is is a known win for white. So here, uh, let's go back to the very beginning, where we saw that uh, black was unable to stop white from advancing the pawn because uh, every time, every time it seemed like he was preventing the pawn from advancing, the white king could get close enough to attack the uh, square in front of the pawn and also stop the rook from checking. So let's look at what difference having three squares in between the uh, rook and pawn versus having two. So rook e8 is the only move to draw the position. We have three squares in between the rook and pawn. We'll see what happens if white tries to advance the pawn using the method we just saw. King f4, threatening to push to e5. Rook f8 check, king g5, rook e8, attacking the square in front of the pawn. King f5, rook f8 check, king g6. And now here, after rook to e8, uh, white doesn't have a move that uh, attacks the rook and attacks the e5 square. So that, that is the difference. Um, let's say white, uh, well, white plays king f5 to defend the pawn. I mean, the black was threatening, rook takes e4. And if white protects it with his rook, brings the rook behind the pawn, well, just king d6, followed by king e7, uh, black should be able to achieve a, a filled door position. So, um, say king f5, the only move that protects the pawn, rook f8 check, king e6, rook e8 check, and, uh, I mean, white, black is, uh, you know, skewering the king and pawn, so there's only one move, king f5, and well, we've seen this position before. So, here, uh, because there's so much distance between the king and the pawn, the king is unable to force the advance of the pawn using, uh, you know, the king alone. So, uh, checking distance, it also works from the side. You remember this position, which was uh, lost for black? Well, let's imagine that we have this instead. Um, it also works, you know, laterally. Here, there's uh, three squares in between the uh, file where the rook is and the file where the pawn is. And this means that black will be able to prevent white from advancing the pawn without the rook's help. Um, king e7, rook h7 check. Um, king e8, rook h8 check. King f7, rook h7 check. And here, if the uh, if the king approaches the rook, well, we have rook d7 hitting the pawn. The only move to defend the pawn is rook d1, and then king to c6. Uh, the pawn will drop. So say white plays king e6 instead, threatening to advance the pawn. Well, rook h6 check, king e5, rook h5 check. Now if the king goes back up, then after rook h6 check, we just repeat the position. So uh, there are three other moves to try. Let's look at them. King f4, uh, the king is too far away from the pawn. Uh, after rook d5, black gets the rook behind the pawn and captures it on the next move. King d4 also draws. After rook h6, black attacks the pawn. And if the king goes up to defend it, then just uh, rook h5 check, and you know, we, we get to repeat a position. Uh, d7 is no good because of rook d6 check. It's a fork winning the pawn. Let's see, uh, what move haven't we looked at? We looked at king f4, where black gets behind the pawn. We look at king d4, where black attacks the pawn. Now king e4, and well, we just check again. I mean, if uh, if the white king goes to the d or the f file, then black plays the same way as before. 
So T3, we're going to do a check, and it's clear that uh, White's not making any progress. So, yeah, I hope that is a, uh, that is a sufficient example of the concept of checking distance in uh, Rotten Pawn Endgames. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.